What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of The Realistic Criminal. This is episode number 29 and as we look at the calendar you'll see us face today Aston Villa, Watford and Leeds. Um, we're heading into what is the business end of the season, you know. We go into a cup game with Villa round five. We're one round away from the quarterfinals. We're in a European scrap four uh, in the league as well. So really, it's going to be a really tight end towards the season. But heading into this game, Villa Park, Unai Emery's men away for a place in the quarterfinals. Um, we beat Bournemouth via a replay, which obviously we, we didn't get to see because uh, we lost the uh, footage in the last episode, but we beat them 3-1. They did take us to a replay, though, which was a bit frustrating. Um, Villa currently sat in 14th in the Premier League, so not doing too well. They're sort of just uh, pretty static, although, um, <laughs> oh, God, yeah, they, we'll, we'll get to that goal in a minute. Um, we beat, uh, we won uh, 3-0 at Villa Park earlier in the season. Um, uh, we do make eight changes to this to this team. Uh, Henderson, Awanian, Burton, and Diaz all keep their places, but the rest of the team uh, all change. We I wanted to keep the the both ends of our team strong. Henderson in goal and Awanian, Burton, Diaz up top to give us the best chance possible to uh, to win this game and book our place in the quarterfinals. Um, as you can see, we um we took we took a one 0 deficit. Um, an absolute uh, a collection of howlers at the defence before. Uh, Jacob Ramsey um, uh, took the ball off Henderson and scored. And um, as you can see by the highlights, we got absolutely peppered in the first half. And Unai Emery is fuming because he knows that a 1-0 lead is, is the worst lead to have in football. They Some say a 2-0 is the worst lead. I think 1-0 is. Because if you miss those chances, you'll be you'll be made to pay. And um, that's exactly what we did to um, Villa here. We With pretty much our first chance of the game, uh, a goal kick from uh, a missed chance goes up to Brereton Diaz, he flicks onto Nelson and Reese Nelson scores and then uh, into the second half we would take the lead. Brereton Diaz continuing this hot form, putting it absolutely top corner to give us a 2-1 lead and turn this game around. Gibbs White had a really good chance to make it 3-1 but um, he put his shot wide. I'll be honest, I've not been impressed with Morgan in this save. He has not done it for me and I might sell him in the summer, you know, he may be, Wal uh, he may be Forrest's record signing um, in real life, but I, I might sell him in the summer, we'll see what sort of bids come in for him. Uh, anyway, we would make it 3-1, Jesse Lingard with a nice finish, we make a few subs to save our best players, and then Reese Nelson will get his second goal of the game, been impressed, I say it every time, been impressed with Reese Nelson when he plays. It's crazy to think he's only 24, it feels like he's been around forever, but he gets our fourth goal, Villa would make it 4-2, uh, Ben Yedda. Uh, he, he always scores against us absolute thorn in our side he makes it 4-2 but it would not matter that goal as we would see off the win 4-2 a game of two halves really um, Villa peppered us and as I said they they missed three or four golden chances and then uh, it, you know if you're still if it's 1-0 you know you're still in the game and uh, we did take our chance right at the end of the half and then the second half we just blew them out of the water um, but yeah, that's it. We're now through to the FA Cup quarter final. So I think the board wanted us to reach the round of 16, if, if I remember correctly. So we've already completed that objective. We reached the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. We're now in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup where we will face Fulham, the Cottagers, away from home. A winnable game, I think. Very, very winnable game. Fulham currently in a relegation scrap. That is absolutely a winnable game. And we will actually see that game in this episode. So we won't see Leeds... We'll see Fulham in the cup after this game against Watford. Um, another tasty time there as well, the Manchester derby in the FA Cup quarterfinal. I absolutely love that. Uh, but heading into the second game of the episode, it's Watford at home, currently sat in 17th. The Hornets are struggling uh, as they return to the Premier League this season. They're in that bottom four that are separated by four points uh, along with Fulham. So they are in a proper, proper scrap. Um, for those of you that remember, remember, we beat Watford in a thrilling game at Vicarage Road earlier in the season. Three times the Hornets led, but uh, we would eventually win it 4-3 in injury time. Uh, a great opportunity for another three points as we push for Europe. Well, it would not be a good start. We would go 1-0 down. Vega hit the bar very early on, but then Watford would go down the other end and score. Uh, it was that guy, uh, Quito, who I think scored twice against us in the reverse fixture as well. So absolutely sick of the sight of him. Um, we would make it 1-0. Vega with a, with a nice ball and uh, a one-yeep heads in. Vega is... 
He struggled a little bit since coming back from that three month injury, but I feel like gradually, game by game, he's getting back to the form he was in, which is nice to see because he was a class pick up on the free agency. And well, let's hope we can bring him back to his best. Well, heading back into the second half, we would go 2 1 down. At Watford, play play nice football around the box. They they did it for their first goal, they did it for their second goal. Uh, they play it around nicely and they find a free man at the back of the, of the back stick and they make it 2 1. But Alexis Vega, right on cue, makes it 2 2. I think that's his first goal since his injury. So he was injured for three months and then I don't think he scored. I think he's been back about a month. He hasn't scored since. That's his first goal. A nice finish from Syankov's cross, post and in. He then almost made it 3 2, complete the quick turnaround, but his shot went just wide before Ben Hamer saved a one year shot, who, who appears to have picked up a knock. Hopefully, that's not too serious. Syankov put through. He would find the go-ahead goal for us with 15 minutes to go. The Ukrainian goal and an assist in this second half. He's been brilliant since coming in. A bit quiet recently, but you know he dips in and out just like Vega. Uh, but they've been class over when those can positions. Uh, we do make some subs as I felt like the game, we should see the game out. And I wanted to keep some fresh legs for the Fulham game. Uh, but that was a, uh, a poor mistake. And Watford would find the equaliser. That man, Koita, again, back-to-back -back braces against us as the roles have reversed and it's Watford inflicting the injury time pain on us. How ironic. Definitely two points dropped um, against a relegation side. It's never good to drop two points and concede three goals to them. I think I'm just, I'm just, I've just conceded the fact that we concede a lot of goals. It's I find it so hard to defend against the AI. You would have seen in their first two goals, the way they pass the ball around, they always seem to have a man spare. I just find it impossible to defend against that. And so I feel like I've almost accepted the fact that we'll probably be, be the lead top scorers, but uh, we'll also have the leakiest defence. And unless we can sort out the defence, I think that will be the continuing theme throughout this save. Uh, luckily, Awani's injury was only a five-dayer. And uh, Bella Kotchup says that he wants to play the next game, which is perfect because it's a cup game, so he will do. Although I am going to bring him off the bench. I go with our strongest 11 here against Fulham. They may be in a relegation scrap, but I want to have the best chance possible to put us into a semi-final, our second cup semi-final of, this, of the uh, season, by the way. It would be absolutely class. We go with our strongest 11 to play the Cottagers. Uh, in three fixtures against Fulham, um, the home side has won every game, actually, funnily enough. Um, they beat us They beat us at home, and then we've beat them at home once last season and once this season. We're yet to play them um, at Crane Cottage in the league this season. But um, I'll be honest, we were hot on it this game. We were all over Fulham right from the off. A couple of chances. Leno made a couple of good saves, and then Cyan called for the free kick. It gets blocked, but then he gets his own rebound. He makes it 1-0 with a nice finish. A one you would make it to another save from Leno. He was class this game for Fulham, to be honest. He really tr uh, tried to keep them in this game. But um, his shot, his save, sorry, only went straight to a one yi and he bags our second goal of the game. Heading into the second half, um, chances again straight away. Brereton Diaz um, forcing Leno into a good save before uh, the Chilean releases his strike partner. A one yi through on goal. He has the freedom of Fulham to run through and he emphatically makes it 3-0 before. Oh, this goal would have been beautiful, by the way. That was Robin Van Persie-esque uh, against, was it Villa on the final day uh, for Man United when Rooney played the ball over the top and he let it drop over his shoulder and he volleyed? Um, I think was it against Guzan to give United the title? That was that's, that was in my head when uh, when I shot that. Unfortunately, a one year shot went um, went over. But anyway, we we would put Fulham to the sword. Vega with a couple of goals. That's three and two now for the Mexican. Hopefully, he's back in form. Um, this was a really nice goal. Farmer with the cross. Lingard with just the lovely touch down to Vega to volley for his second. Lingard uh, passes up the opportunity to get his first of the game, but we would get our sixth. Nia Carte with a towering header to complete the route. That's an assist for Vega as well as two goals. Great from the Mexican. Nia Carte, I think that's just his second goal with a save. Very rarely does he score. And then right at the death, pretty much the last kick of the game, Henderson's forced into his first save of the game, um, denying the Fulham striker and keeping our clean sheet. And that would be it, full time. Absolute put the sword to Fulham. I was very happy with this game. It's our joint highest um, score, or our joint highest win in the save, uh, matching our 6-0 away win at Burnley earlier this season. 
so emphatic that we got the job done. Oh, honestly, I'm very, very proud of the boys. They absolutely smashed out of the park and they've booked a place in the semi-final where you would see we will play Spurs. Yes, Antonio, well, not Antonio Conte Spurs anymore, but in the save Antonio Conte Spurs in the FA Cup semi-finals at Wembley. We do get that trip to Wembley after all, after missing out in the Carabao Cup semi-finals. Liverpool v Man City in the other semi-finals as well. It's going to be tasty. Um, you remember we beat Tottenham in the last episode 4-3. Brereton Diaz scoring a hat-trick. But before that game, Tottenham had beaten, the three, beaten us in the three previous meetings. So this one's going to be tough. This one's going to be very, very tough. But 90 minutes, you never know what could happen. Anyway, that will be it for today's episode. Another great episode. We carry on chugging away. We're in a cup semi-final. We're fifth in the league in a big old scrap for European spots. We're moving into the business end of the season. There's only 10 league games to go, plus potentially two more cup games. So the next few episodes are going to be huge. Don't, make sure you don't miss them. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We're so close to 200 subs already. The support on this series has been brilliant. So thank you so, so much. Drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed it and if you are enjoying the series. And I'll catch you in episode 30 very soon.